Okay, the next thing I want to show is how to select two items from a tree that uh, quote unquote belong together according to you. So instead of having this, let's make one one grid. Just for sim to keep it simple, uh, so one plane over here. Okay. Uh, this this component gives us a bunch of squares, polylines, that are each cell, and it gives us a bunch of points that are the corners of, the, of each cell. But what if we want to create lines that are like crossing these two cells, or just recreate individual lines between all of these different points instead of squares? In that, that case, we would have to say, well, make a line from this point here to this point there. And this point is at location 0, 0, 0. And this point is at location 0, 1, 0. So how do we define that we want a relationship from every one of these points to the one to the right and the one to the top? We can do this with, uh, with something called relative, relative tree items. In the sets tree panel, you will find two components uh, that listen to this name. There's relative item and relative items. And the only difference is that this one works on a single tree and select, selects two neighbors from a single tree. And this one selects two neighbors from two different trees. So let's start with just a single re re relative item component. It's, uh, it's reasonably complicated because you have to actually supply a bit of text which describes what you want it to do. Right, let me go back to my point view. Okay. So we'll operate on this tree. And what we want to, we want to do is we want to select every item in this tree. And every item will end up in this output. And for every item, we want to select the item that's to the right of it. So if we take this item, select this one, and put it in B. And for this item, put this one in, in B. And similarly, for this item, put this one in B. So in fact, what, what we'll get is a bunch of points in A and B that represent pairs of points in the tree. And we can use the, the lines segment to actually connect those two. So how does this all work? Uh, WP and WI are booleans to tell us whether it's allowed to wrap around. So when it's at the last item, does it, is it allowed to jump back to the first item? And in this case, no, because our, our grid is not closed. It's, it's, it doesn't represent some sort of, 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 of closed shape. So we'll, we'll say that's, that is not allowed. So both paths and items are not allowed to wrap, and they're both false by default. The offset takes uh, a bit of text, and let's create a, a panel for this. Multi-line, there we go. Now, of course, by default, this doesn't work because this is not a valid offset. This is not an offset mask. A valid offset mask is very similar to, but not, not the same as the, the path mapper mask we had before. Right. Actually, let me remove the, the simplifying there. So before we had A, B, C, goes to A, B, C, and we'll use a very, very similar notation for an offset mask. What we'll do is we will say that I want to have this sort of notation. But these numbers, they no longer identify a location in the tree, they, they identify uh, a movement. So if I want to go from 0, 0 to the next, uh, to the, to the next column, I can say please add plus one here. So plus one means for every item in this tree, take the item that's at the same first number, the same second number, with the one higher third number, and the same index. And this actually created individual line segments between here and there, between there and there, and so on down. Uh, if I if I tell it to pick not just the, sec the second 
column, but also the second row. So if I want to go from, from here to there, then my path is, uh, my, my mapping offset goes from 0, 0, 0, 0 to, oh, ah, to text, 0, 0, 1, 1. Right, so this is one higher than this number, and this one is also one higher than this number. So I can replace the index with one plus one as well. And now it actually connects these items with those items. And thus so all of us all along the tree. And when it reaches the end, it stops because it can't connect anything beyond here. If, if, if we would allow it to wrap in both directions, uh, sorry, that's true. I think we need to toggle there. You can actually see it sort of jumping back to the start and jumping down. It's, it's, it's a bit messy, but if this was a, a spherical or cylindrical grid, it would make more sense to do this. Okay, uh, <laughs> there's lots of questions. I'm not quite sure when the newest one starts. Uh, Okay, so people want, want to see the, the names of, of capsules. So uh, I'll switch the names instead of icons. By Alex? Is it the one? Or the, or the last one by, by uh, Stefan? Okay, the difference is yes. It's. The bracket notation is, uh, is something I. It, it, it hasn't been quite consistent throughout Grasshopper, which is a problem. But it, it's going to become more consistent in the near future. The curly brackets, they always identify a, a list in a tree or a branch in a tree. So a curly bracket and then any number of integers separated with semicolons identify a branch in a tree. Once you have a branch, you then use either square brackets or parentheses to identify an item in that branch. Uh, I prefer to use two different kinds of brackets here because otherwise it, it, it gets very confusing if you have curly, curly brackets and again curly brackets. But the basic idea is that this, this talks about, about branches in the tree and this talks about items in the branch. Is that, is that a sufficient explanation for? Yes, it, it used to be always a parentheses before. So uh, until recently, the notation would, would always be branch and then item. However, uh, we are moving towards a curly brackets for branches and square brackets for items notation. And we will use the parentheses to define subgroupings in either of these two sets. Uh, for now, I think offsets work with both square and parentheses. And I think path number will also work with both square and parentheses. Uh, I, I, I can make it work for both without breaking anything. But, treat, but item selections mask will only work with square brackets. And that's the, that's the last topic for today. I mean, we're not, not quite there yet. All right, uh, let's... It's back to false again. Okay, there we go. Let's hide this. Uh, we can supply more than one of these offsets. So we can say, well, please connect points to points in the next column that are one higher or that are one lower. And if I supply both these paths, you actually get a, more, uh, a bigger tree in the output with, which has more pairs of points that connect both up and down across this grid. And we can even say, well, please connect the ones that are at the same height and connect the ones that are one higher but in the same tree. So now we get in the same column with one item up or just one column over at the same elevation. And now we get both diagonals, horizontals, and verticals going into this tree. 
And this, this really is the only easy way to, to do this sort of thing. Uh, it takes one component and a bunch of strings or text, uh, text paths. If you try to do this using flip matrix and shift matrix and select paths, you'll be making uh, something which takes at least a dozen components and it's very hard to read. So, so if you know how this works, it's a great way to, 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 to save some time making a file.